everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Sam Healy, welcome back, folks. And it's time for another Top 10. This is a Top 10 that we did four years ago. When we do them four years ago, we tend to, uh, you know, we come back and revisit them, mm -hmm. especially in the case of this one, mm -hmm. because huh. so much has changed over the past four years in the Kickstarter arena. And that's what we're doing today, Top 10 Kickstarted Games. Okay, cool. Now, every time I do this list or talk about this list, someone shows up and goes, why are you doing Kickstarter games? It's just the way that they're published. Why does that differentiate them? And I would argue that you could make that argument on about any category we do. But I do it because a lot of people kind of throw shade at Kickstarter a lot of times. Mm. Oh, it's a Kickstarter game. Oh my goodness, I could have did my top 100 Kickstarters. Oh, There's so shade. many good ones at this point. Using that modern lingo. Oh, no. Throwing shade. I gotta, I gotta, gotta speak so the kids can understand gotta, it. <laughs> gotta keep up with the young folk. Um, so, uh, so this is a live show, of course, and so we're gonna be doing these top ten. And at the end, if there's something that you think that we missed, ask us, and we'll tell you why it didn't make the list. Although, oh, I forgot. No, wait. Let me... It hasn't been released yet, I guess. Okay, good. I'm glad Sam said that. There's actually. There was two games that I did not put on my list because they're not out yet, the Kickstarter versions. One was Project Elite, which is my favorite game currently, but it's not out yet. So I'm right. not counting that as a Kickstarter because I've mostly played the non-Kickstarter right. version. And the other is Awkward Guess, a game I like a lot, but it, the Kickstarter hasn't fulfilled and all that jazz. So I didn't pick those games. Or like I like Batman, but it's not out yet. Sure. I haven't picked those games. Uh, I know Sam's number one, but we'll see what the rest of the... <laughs> You don't. Yes! Nobody knows. There's no waffling this time because TI4 didn't come out on Kickstarter. <laughs> this is true. All right. Anyway, let's get started with number 10. Number 10. All right. Hey, my number 10 is a actual, I guess you could say, tie between two games that are based on the core system. So it's really just one system with two different skins wrapped around it. And uh, one came out a while ago, and one just came out this year. And that is the Heroes of Normandy, Heroes of Blackreach. Uh, Heroes system is what it's based upon. Pick one. If I have <laughs> to pick just one, I'll probably go with Blackreach. And the only reason that is is because while I have a lot of stuff for Normandy... I have a lot of stuff for, for Normandy, and it's almost like bloated at this point. Uh, so, oh, I know that feeling. So, yeah, I mean, it's just there's just so much yeah. out there. So, uh, but the system is really what I'm putting at number ten here. It's the hero system because it's such a fun system. It's such a streamlined system. The rule books were not that great, which was problematic, but. Uh, the system itself, once you grasp the concept that uh, the rule books are trying to teach you, then it's, it's really, really simple. And it's really fun. And it takes all of your stats that you would usually find in like uh, charts and diagrams and all of this other kind of stuff, and it puts it right on the table for you. Uh, and that's just really cool to me. Uh, so that's my number 10, the Heroes of Normandy, Heroes of Blackreach system. My number 10 is Everdell, and uh, it's my number 10 uh, because I really enjoy the system, and it exhibits, unfortunately, uh, some of the issues that Kickstarter games can sometimes bring to bear. I'm a tree! Uh, like a tree that doesn't need to be there. <laughs> uh, I'm a tree! But it was, you know, again, it, it, these things slip in there just by the very nature of running a Kickstarter that for any really product. Cool, uh, that's part of the reason why it's in there. It's a gorgeous looking game. It's a, certainly an overproduced game. I don't have a problem with that. I like games that look fantastic. And it's a solid card tableau building kind of game. Lots going on. Tons of great artwork. Tons of fun effects. I like card games that have a lot going on. You know, uh, Imperial Settlers style card games I call them. I guess Race for the Galaxy or, or San Juan were the first ones that turned me on to that type of game. And Everdell sort of fits in there for me. So my number 10 is Everdell. Before I do my number 10, it was pointed out to me that the original Project Elite was, yes, indeed, a Kickstarter. And I don't know why. <laughs> don't. Uh, from Draw Lab Entertainment. With the best miniatures of any Kickstarter ever. No. Let out in the sun. Yes. So assume that's my Partially number one, melted. actually. So I can do my 
This is two top tens in a row. It's okay. What's your number 11? <laughs> <laughs> My number 11 is a game that came out this year, actually, and it's a game that I played quite a bit. I keep wanting to go back to, and that's called King's Guild. Uh, King's Guild is this splendor killer, splendorific, splendor, anyway. It's a game in which you are collecting resources and then turning them into accomplished missions. Really simple game, but it's one that I really enjoy. I like the whole idea of take a quick turn. I get some resources, I turn the resources in for a mission, I buy a building or cards that give me special abilities. That's a great concept. It's one that I like a lot, and so I... You know, sometimes big and grandiose, which is a good chunk of my Kickstarter picks here, is not always what I want. Sometimes I want to play something that's just simple and easy. So this one here is my number. <laughs> 11. 10. I'm just going to say the, the numbers on the list. Got it. <laughs> I'm not sitting in shame this time. Okay. Much. That was my number 10. It was uh, number 9. All right, my number nine is uh, probably, let me see. Um, yeah, this is probably one of the most eccentric themed games, I guess, that are on my list. And that uh, it's, it's Sukuyumi Full Moon Down. Uh, basically, the theme behind this oh, is okay. that uh, uh, the moon has crashed into Earth. And, in, and it's basically yields to a post-apocalyptic type of world but there are different factions that are trying to survive on earth but there's also some um uh, i can't remember what they're called in the game now but they're the bad guys basically they're yomis or something like that affect the uh, Japanese flavored um, legendary mythical. I would type not play the game based on how it looks. Like I gotta say. Well, uh, that is one of the least prototypey pictures I was able to find. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of standees in there. But again, usually that's a huge turnoff for me. But I really enjoyed the game system so much that I was able to overlook it. Um, but on top of that, they also have a deal right now in the works with Gray Fox Games. They're going to be doing a Kickstarter here in the very near future for miniatures version of this game. Actually, I'm not even opposed to it. It just looks like there's a lot going on in oh, the picture. Oh, there is a that's lot going on, and that's one of the coolest things about the game is the fact that it's just there's there's a lot going on and variable player powers, asymmetric variable player powers, uh, just a lot of really cool, fun things going on here. And it's, uh, it, it came out of the dark, came out of the left field, and I really enjoyed it. Tsukiyumi, Full Moon Down, my number nine. So, question. It's called Full Moon Down, right? But how, how is there any other kind of moon? Like, if a quarter moon came down, I'm sure the whole moon still comes down. I have no idea. Yes. I don't know. No! I was asking. <laughs> it's a cool name. Yeah. It would sound weird like Quarter Moon Down. That'd be a good expansion. No, they already have an expansion. Uh, I'm saying stupid stuff. That's yes. number one. Cool. My number nine is a <laughs> game called Endeavor Age of Sail. This is a reprint of Endeavor. It was just called Endeavor. Came out from Z Man Games many moons ago. What? Referencing Sam's number nine? Ooh. And uh, the reprint is fantastic. Again, this is the kind of thing that I think Kickstarters can excel in. And it's uh, taking a game that was out before. They're not quite sure what kind of reception it's going to receive, how many people really want it. Because there can be this echo chamber effect with, where it seems like a lot of people are going reprint, reprint. And it's the same 28 people. So <laughs> this is people. it's the same twenty eight people in all of your Kickstarters. Maybe. Uh, so this is a good way to do that, and they added a lot of content to the reprint, retained the core excellence of the original game, a very streamlined Euro game, but they added a lot of value and content to it, and it still looks fantastic. The original game was a good looking game. The new one I think still holds up. They of course did a fancy schmancy edition, which I haven't seen in person, but I hear it looks good. So Endeavor, Age of Sale, I think was a, a great game and a good one for Kickstarter. 
All right, my number nine is a big, giant, humongous game because that's how Kickstarter tends to do things. Mm -hmm. And it's a card game. It's the biggest card game. I... No, it's not the biggest card game. That's about to lie. But it's one of the biggest card games, and that's Thunderstone Quest. Uh, Thunderstone Quest, the third edition of Thunderstone. Uh, AEG entering the Kickstarter arena. I don't believe they've done it before, Thunderstone Quest. Um, I don't know. Uh, they, uh, most of their games are not Kickstarter. They do smash up and stuff. But this one was so big and so grandiose and so over the top. Mm. Um, they took Thunderstone. They're like, you thought there was a lot of cards. We're going to add tokens. You thought that we're adding miniatures. Why? Because miniatures. Actually, the miniatures work in this game. You're just well, one you, miniature you, moving around. You needed to fund on Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Right. No, I think it would have funded without the miniatures and stuff. There's a lot of content. I mean, there's so much content in this game that when I got my copy of it, and I went through it, and I was like, I wonder if I have the Kickstarter stuff. I don't even know. Like, mm -hmm. the Kickstarter exclusives. Mm -hmm. And then I was after a while, I was like, I don't even care. <laughs> there's just so much. Even when I pared it down to the Epic, which only uses a couple cards of each type, there's still a lot of, still a lot in the game. I really do like this game, though. So my number nine, Thunderstone Quest. Number eight. My number eight is uh, 878 Vikings, uh, Invasions of England. And this is... Oh, yeah, this was a kick... I guess he's doing most of his games Kickstarter these days. Yeah, yeah. but uh, they had a lot of Kickstarter exclusives. They had some, uh, a lot of stretch goals that were, were reached uh, throughout the course of the game. And a lot of modular expansions that also came uh, with the game as well on the Kickstarter version, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure that's what it, what, what it was. Those were the differences. But uh, this is a great uh, game that can be played with either uh, two or four players. And, uh, and it's, it's just really fun. You can, uh, I like the scalability of it where you can play one person uh, plays the uh, English, one person plays the Vikings, or one person plays uh, the Vikings, two people play the English, and vice versa. You can, you can just really kind of uh, mix it up that way. But uh, the gameplay is fun. Uh, I like the thematic nature of it. Uh, basically, the English are just trying to hold off the Viking invasion uh, as as long as they possibly as can. As they should. And uh, it was it's just a really great game, and I really enjoy it. So that's my number eight, eight seventy eight Vikings invasions of England. That is twenty percent Vikings on Sam's list so far. Hmm. No, ten percent. I can't add. Ten <laughs> percent. It's his number eight. Thirty-three point three percent. You're right. <laughs> Hitting you with the knowledge. All right, my number eight is Chronicles of Crime. It's this is a uh, fantastic, unique game system, which I think benefited from being a Kickstarter game because it was such a quirky, esoteric design. Hmm. And I think putting something like that on Kickstarter goes a long way towards reaching the audience that it that ideally will really enjoy that game. And this was a good move. Now, I mean, it would have been anything, and this company would have put it on Kickstarter. Some companies just go to Kickstarter. But this is the kind of game that does well on there. And miniatures. I mean, if this had <laughs> miniatures, then it would have doubly funded. Um, but Chronicles of Crime is a really engaging game. So it's one that puts the story, the idea of the whodunit front and center, and uses, of course, an app to strip away moving parts and mechanisms and, and uh, make it a very transparent idea. You know, I'm going to visit this place, I'm going to talk to this guy, that takes a couple of clicks on an app, and you're doing it. So this is a, a fantastic concept for that. So Chronicles of Crime from Lucky Duck, my number eight pick. Cool. All right, so when we put these lists together, I said Another this was an easy list to do. I did it really fast. I may have done it too fast. Too fast. Because uh, this would have made my list also. I, I don't know how it didn't. You just got like, you don't have a seat of shame anymore. You have like a kiddie pool of shame. <laughs> so, yeah. anyway. So what's your number my, nine? Then? My, <laughs> <laughs> it's number 10, I think, at this point. <laughs> anyway, my next one is Root. The Root, actually, Chronicles. <laughs> Yeah, it would have been it would have beaten Thunderstone for sure. Anyway, Root is a great. It would have probably beat Root too. Anyway, Root, 
Go ahead. Are you guys rooting for me? No. My root! <laughs> nice. I feel like I'm... Okay, I'm dying here. All right, so Root is a great, <laughs> it's a great game. Asymmetrical game. Uh, the cool expansion, which I have not yet fully explored, which is why I haven't done a review of it yet, and they just announced another expansion mm -hmm. and a third edition of the game, which confused me slightly because I must have missed the second edition this somewhere along the line. Maybe this is second. I feel like I got the first edition of it. It's, maybe it was a print and play. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, uh, but Root is a really cool uh, game in which you, it's basically one of those big coin games that is, you know, uh, they stand for command operated. Wow, counter, I don't remember what it stands for. Someone's going to say in the comments. But anyway, uh, it's a big war game reduced down to like a silly forest, cats versus birds versus, you know, woodland creatures versus uh, some traveler guy who's walking around like a monk. I really like it. It's an excellent game, really cool pieces. This is one of those games I'm glad doesn't have miniatures. The little wooden pieces work really well. Yeah. Uh, it's not big and grandiose. It's, it's a smaller game, but feels longer, and there's a lot going on in it. So my number uh, eight. eight, I am Root. Root. <coughs> number seven. My number seven is a another uniquely themed game. Now the theme itself is World War II combat, but the unique part of it is uh, it is covert action. It's not overt, you're not going in guns blazing. You are sneaking around trying not to be heard. It's called The Commandos. This was put out by Triton Noir and it is an amazingly fun game of trying to sneak around, using disguises, uh, accomplishing objectives before you can move on to the second part of the map. Uh, there's just a lot of really neat things going on. Uh, the game probably suffers from a little bit of a too long time frame that it takes to play. But at the same time, it really is a fun game. Um, each scenario is probably going to take you about an hour and a half to two hours, uh, especially as you're learning the game. Uh, but as you it continue to move long. on, well, uh, that's those are the lower, that's the lower end of the spectrum. Um, there are some some scenarios in there that could do, that could take you three three and a half hours. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Continue. so it's, it's it, but I mean, they're grandiose objectives, they're grandiose scenarios, they are really fun, and he's being a dork. Uh, v Commandos, my number seven. Actually, Very I'm surprised because I thought you would put the other one higher, the Normandy one. Uh, the Heroes of Normandy one? Yeah. No. Like, I knew you liked this, but I didn't realize it would make your top ten. Yeah, yeah no, I really enjoy it. My number seven is an abstract game called Santorini. Santorini uh, is based on a little-known abstract game from years before, and it was one of those games that just barely got talked about. A few people knew about it, it seemed. It was an interesting-looking game, a bizarre-looking game, but Kickstarter, with Kickstarter, you're able to then bring forth an abstract game that would normally not get a lot of attention and make it look the way that Santorini looks. Yeah. And have it just be, uh, uh, have true table presence. You know, it's a stunning looking game, especially if you paint the white pieces white, uh, as we know uh, Vernon did. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, I mean, if you want to talk about kicking it up a notch, that's they how were, you do it. They were pearlescent white, well. but still white. Yes. Right, so he painted the white <laughs> building. Oh, stucco white, that's what it was. It was stucco white. White. <laughs> right. um, but it's a fun game. They, of course, added a lot of content from the original design to the Kickstarter version. Uh, and, and even after the Kickstarter, they then put out one that you could buy at Target or something with a sort of it like it downgraded just, components. It just got rid of that big yeah. 3D thing. Right, they got rid of a part that really didn't need to be there, but it added to the table presence. Right. I like that myself. But as I said earlier, I like overproduced games. I don't have a problem with that. So well, it's Santorini, good that's what it, like our whole lists are. It is right. Kickstarter's big on that. So Santorini, uh, an abstract game, really the only one. But boy, a good-looking abstract. My number seven. My number seven is uh, my number nine. Number number seven is I the only Red Raven game to make the list, and that would be Near and Far. I'm pretty sure all his games have been kicked. Well, no, not all of them. 
he's in a couple like Target and some I think he does publish. Mm -hmm. But he does a big game every year to some degree. And Near and Far was amazing. It was really good. I was just trying to think of a pun where I could say Near and Far in the same sentence, but like far beyond my expectations, near to my heart. Anyhow, it's a story. <laughs> I, I, just I, too hard. I didn't eat a lot of lunch today. Anyway, uh, so you're moving around the board um, and going and doing adventures, which is really cool. But there's also like a good Euro game mechanism where you're kind of a worker movement type game where you're going to move and basically build up so that when you go out in adventures, you're better. And I like that part of the game a lot, but I really like the stories too. And I like kind of how they work together and just really coalesce to a great game. So near and far, my number seven. That would have been my 11, that, near and far. At the rate we're going, it actually may be my 11 at some point. Well, yes, yes. But. <laughs> Number six. We've been talking about overproduced games being the quality of Kickstarter games, and this is probably one of the least overproduced games that uh, are maybe on all three of our lists. I don't know what's coming up on theirs, but definitely on mine, this is the least overproduced game that's there. Now there's cool things there, but Deception Murder in Hong Kong is largely just a bunch of cards um, that you're using in different ways. I mean, the overproduced nature of them are these little wooden bullets that uh, uh, you use as just place markers to show what kind of clue you're giving to the rest of the uh, investigators. And uh, beyond that, they really don't have a whole lot. Now, they have a, had an expansion where they've had a lot of different things come out for it. Uh, Undercover Allies, I think is what, they're, what it's called. And then they also have some other things that they've come out with that are like, y you have these little uh, metal badges now instead of having little cardboard tokens that you can have. And, and you have, they have these little um, microscope things that will... Uh, be used in the game. It, it, there, there's a lot of different things, but generally speaking, this is probably the least overproduced Kickstarter game on my list, definitely. I don't know about theirs, but it's really, really fun. And it also has the, 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 the uh, eccentricity that this is the kind of game where you want as many players to play the game as possible. Usually you want to say, no, I don't want to do the full player count because it just takes too long. Mm -hmm. This is one of the games where you really do want to get as close to that, that uh, maximum player count as possible because that means there's more being used in the game and it just makes the game more fun. But uh, that's my number six, Deception, Murder in Hong Kong. I really like that game, but it did not make my list. Yeah. Um, I forgot it was even kickstarted. All right, my number six is a game called Scythe. And Ooh. this is uh, a game that, again, a lot of... Um, this was kickstarted, right? Yes. Is Wait, it was it kickstarted? It was. It's on the list for as kickstarter. Um, <laughs> Tom, Tom's freaking out. I love it. Um, as many of the Stonemaier games have been, this was kickstarted. Uh, there's a couple that they did not kickstart. The new Wingspan did not get kickstarted. This is going to get published, right? That's just coming out, Wingspan. That did yes. not get kickstarted. Yes. Uh, so, um, Scythe, the thing here that I think captivated most people right out of the gate was, of course, the the look of the game, right? This this amazing artwork that, that truly grounds you in a place and time. A made-up place and time, right. but a place and time nonetheless. And then having a game design from a an excellent designer built around that, and that is, as per his very description, how that worked out, is, a, is an interesting concept. It's a, it's a cool story, you know. Uh, it's a it's a game that's got of course tons of love. It's had a lot of expansions and so forth, and it's a really interesting idea. It's one that can be deceiving at first to a lot of people. It looks like a combat game. It looks like a farming game. It's kind of a little bit of both, uh, and it is in many ways sort of based on previous Stonemeyer designs. This idea of the way you win is by achieving many goals throughout the game. This is something that, that they kind of did before. But I really enjoy it. It's, it's a unique idea. So Scythe is my number six pick. Component quality is off the chart with this one too. Yeah. The dual layer boards and everything. 
My number 10 pick. Assuming it's not on your list. My number 10 pick. Jeez Louise. Is <laughs> did you like, how quickly did you make this list? Like five minutes, maybe? Did, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I went through my top 100 because I knew that it, every game my top 100 would make it. Uh -huh. And then I went through my the, the list, the, all the games I played between then and now. So Blood Rage is my <laughs> next. Might not even have made the list at this point. Overrated Viking game. It's crap. Hmm. That's, <laughs> that's no, a it's, glowing it's a, remark for number six. <laughs> it's a great game. It really is. I don't play it that much anymore because I don't have. I can never get to the copy in the Dice Tower Library. Right. Um, constantly why. being played. That's constantly why, being played yeah. by other people. But it is a great drafting game. It is not necessarily the best game in this. Uh, series but it's a very very good one and i like blood rage a lot and it's a good kickstarter and that's why it made my list it's a good pick. <laughs> good job number five my number five is uh from garfield games and it is called the architects of the west kingdom mm, i always forget what that company is called I was going to say this was my number 11, but it's not even. <laughs> this is not even on there anymore. It's your, it's your 15. Architects of the West Kingdom is a great worker placement game, and it has this real neat twist on the worker placement aspect where your workers stay out there, and it's possible that they can be sent to jail from whence you will also have to get them out of jail at some point. And it all works around this really neat economic system, and I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Uh, I also like the the variable. They're not really variable player powers. I guess they are, but they feel more like variable starting positions yeah. uh, in the game rather than just player powers because it gives you a different startup and it also gives you something that only you can do throughout the course of the game as well. So it's both, um, but I guess we'll just call it variable player powers. But I really enjoy that as a mechanism as well, and it works really well in Architects of the West Kingdom too. So both of those combining worker placement and variable player powers are two of my favorite mechanisms, and the uh, artwork is also great. Same artist as the uh, uh, Raiders of the North Sea, uh, Shipwrights of the North Sea, and all those kind of guys, all those games out there. So I really enjoy that art style as well. So all of that just combined had to be on the list. So that's my number five, Architects of the West Kingdom. All right, my number five is a game called Fate of the Elder Gods mm. uh, from several designers, one of them being... Uh, um, um, Lanius. Lanius, thank you. I really feel like the Fate of the Elder Gods is they always win. Because that's the way I feel like when I play in a game. Fate of the Elder God, he's going to take over the universe. Yeah, but in this game, you are helping them take over the universe. So that's, that's the only good. way I can make them lose. You have a better chance of winning. It's a stunning looking game. That's largely a, a big part of why it's on the list. Uh, it's a. I just love the component quality in this game. The board has a very strange shape, as you can see there. Everyone has little cultist figures that are great chunky plastic. There's a big Cthulhu figure that you move around the board in order to take actions with that. Lots of cards with fantastic, you know, finish on them. Everything looks good. Uh, artwork all over the place. Uh, in fact, they give you two of those Cthulhu figures. Everything has a uh, the big beasties anyway have a nice wash on them the, the miniatures do just because you know it's one extra thing the the investigators who are the bad guys technically in this game have a nice wash on them so it's it's an interesting game there's a little bit of take that there's a little bit of you know messing with the other players of course it's a Delonious game in part so that that's got to be there but it's also an engaging one. It's one in which, in which uh, you are pushing either for a straight out-and-out -out victory, think of it as like a point victory, or make everyone suffer so much that when it's all said and done, you've suffered the least, hmm. and you win that way. And I like that. I think it, both are really viable. It makes an interesting sort of rush to the finish. So I really enjoy it. Um, Fleet of the Elder, Go Elder Gods had an expansion as well that was neat. Um, just a good looking game and a, and a fun one to, to play and mess with each other in, you know. That's my number five pick. 
My number five picks another game from Simon Games, and this is one I really enjoy better than Blood Rage, and that is Arcadia Quest. I really like this silly game. Uh, who knows if it will be surpassed by Star Arcadia Quest. I don't have any hopes, opinions, or caring. I, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to Star Arcadia Quest, but mm -hmm. I don't... I don't know. I'm just going to have to play it and see. But Arcadia Quest has so much content. Most of which I may never see in a game. I played most of. I played against all the monsters, but there's so many heroes, and there's pets, and there's riders, and there's all kinds of fun stuff. Really like it. I liked it. It introduced the concept of a short campaign. Games have these really long campaigns, and I'm just sick of it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm sick of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, just don't take that into too much account uh, as coming up here. But I, I mean, I like the long campaigns. I'm just glad that not every game has one now. Right. 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 So Arcadia Quest just. Hit the other person, and this is the game that, to me, I think introduced the exploding die. It might have been in an earlier game, but it definitely came to the forefront of this one, and I love it. Well, it's, in, it's in chaos in the old world, but... Well, it's the same designer, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't remember that in chaos in the old world, but I still like it. Arcadia Quest, my number five! Number four! My number four is a game from Mythic Games and it's called Mythic Battles Pantheon. Uh, Mythic Battles Pantheon is a very fun game that uh, has uh, just, it's more, people are probably going to say, why did you include this one over Lords of Hellas? Because they kind of came out around the same time. Uh, Lords of Hellas I enjoy a lot, but this one is more my style of game where you can take your team of people up against a team of other people or a couple other people or what have you and uh, just battle for dominance basically and that's what I enjoy about the game. The uh, the miniatures are off the charts as far as how, how good they are and, and the quality that are made with them. Uh, the other components of the game, especially if you went like all in with the Kickstarter components, are also amazing. They gave you different dice that you could use throughout the course of the game. They gave you dice pouches. They gave you uh, just a whole lot of stuff in the Kickstarter. It's a great system. I really do enjoy it a lot, and it's very fun. So that's my number four, Mythic Battles Pantheon. I don't normally play miniatures games, but this is certainly one that I would probably be interested in trying out because it lets me do that thing I always want to do, which is control these big monsters. Mm -hmm. And there's so few games that let you do that. Sure. Usually it's a bear's a big right. monster. I want to fight it. I'm like, what? I want to just... You know, like, bring an army of monsters. Lords of Hellas was also in consideration for mine. That was actually, I think, my number 11. Uh, I really like Lords of Hellas. Yeah. No, it is really good. The, the, uh, the card-driven uh, aspect of this game is also very fun, too. That's one of the reasons I like it. More than just, you know, take your guys. You, you have to manage your hand uh, as best you can, too. Cool. All right, speaking of big monsters and controlling minis and all that stuff, my number four is coming up on someone else's list a little later, but it's called Rising Sun. And uh, again, because of the Kickstarter, you get these unbelievable miniatures and True. so many of them right. and extra sets of uh, cards and powers and different ways to play. And, oh, you want to play a variant in which you have uh, these deities be a part of the concept. Fine, we're giving you miniatures for them too. Oh, you want 22 more clans? Done. Stretch goal at, you know, $3 million or whatever. There's a <laughs> lot of this. No, it's like, they usually do like $3,215. <laughs> That's true. It's a weird number always. Um, anyway, it's, it's an epic game. We'll hear more about that a little bit later. That's my number four pick, Rising Sun. My number four pick came out in 2018, and that is Vindication. Really, really enjoying this one. Um... It is, and it's on Kickstarter right now, I guess, or just finished. It's still on Kickstarter. A second okay. go around, or what? Yeah, with an expansion. The third edition, yeah. But I don't even care. To, I mean, I'll get the expansion. I'm excited about that. I just like the game as is. I really like the speed of this game. This is how I want my Euro games to feel. Cool theme, cool pieces, and just quick actions. It's like a sandbox. It's a small sandbox. Not a ton of things to do, but enough that I feel like every game I play differently. It's like, a, like a sand bucket. Sand, a sand spoon. No, that's too small. <laughs> sand bucket's good. Yeah. Sand bath, a sandbox. I'm, uh, you just said sandbox. Okay, but so like Zaya's like the beach. Right. It's a sand beach. Beaches normally are. Um, but this, 
I really like Vindication. It's my number four. Number three. My number three is uh, from Simon, and uh, I believe this is the first. Yeah, first time Simon was on my list. So my number three, Zombicide Black Plague. Mm -hmm. Now this one uh, kind of came to the forefront for me because I really wasn't that enamored with their original. Um, and yes, it's just a couple of rule changes that I didn't like with the original, but they just didn't make sense. Uh, so because they didn't make sense, I didn't enjoy the game. They fixed them um, with Zombicide Black Plague and on top of that, I like the theme better with Zombicide Black Plague than I do just the regular, you know, futuristic, you know, uh, run around in modern cities and that type of stuff. I like the fact that it goes medieval and uh, I, I just enjoy that setting better than the original. Uh, they have uh, Zombicide Invader coming out, which is a sci-fi aspect of it. So I'm looking forward to trying that one out to see if it feels any different in that different setting with the different abilities that they can throw in there and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I really enjoyed Zombicide Black Plague. They have had a Green Horde come out as an ex a standalone expansion for it. Um, just really enjoy this system of, of game, and I, and I uh, could not not include it on my list. My number three, Zombicide Black Plague. All right, my number three is uh, Rising Five, The Runes of Astros, yes. and it is uh, a big reason why that makes the list, besides being a good game, which I enjoy, oh, it's really is that they had a uh, fancy schmancy edition of it with miniatures and more content and a massive pretty mm -hmm. box and everything. So, again, there were two versions of this. The more affordable one that you could find after the fact. And right. It had standees. And then this one you're seeing there, which has miniatures and uh, just a little bit more content in it. Either one's fine. Same exact game. But it's a fantastic looking game. Artist is, of course, Vincent Dutrait, who... Yep does not ever make bad looking games <laughs> and it's a fun cooperative slash deduction game yep. uh, again we say it every time this game comes up but we kind of have to it's basically mastermind cooperative yeah really enjoy it one of my favorites rising five the runes of astros yeah that that uh, deluxe version also has a lot of modular stuff that comes in it as well mm -hmm. that really kind of changes the flavor of the game as well right. so that's really cool good pick all right, my number three is Rising Sun. Uh, Rising Sun, fantastic game. I'm actually, I like the miniatures in Rising Sun, unpainted mostly. Um, but the thing about Rising Sun for me is just the gameplay. I love the battle system in it. Um, someone in chat said they didn't like the negotiation, the force negotiation, but you don't have to negotiate. This game feels like it's negotiation on the side. It's more about picking the right action. I'm a big fan of picking an action that everyone gets, and then you get a bonus. I've always liked that in games. Sure. It doesn't hurt that this the components in this game are the I'm oh, I'm a, I'm thrilled about the non-miniature components, the upgrades that the Kickstarter did. Yes. The tiles and the, the putting the stuff together and the three ah it's just great. And I like all the aspects of this one. It's a lot of fun. So Rising Sun, my number three. Cool. Number two. My number two is a game uh, put out by, I believe it's, oh man, I just, I think it's Grimoire Games, um, but it's Village Attacks. Village Attacks what? is a really, Isn't that yeah, number two? Yeah, it's my number two. I really enjoy the concept of the game, and I really enjoy all the, con all the, all the components of the game as well. Um, I just think it's really cool that they've taken this idea uh, of, you know, monsters against villagers and kind of flipped it on its head, where... The players are the monsters, and they're being attacked by the villagers. Usually it's the other way around, where you're trying to fend off the monsters and that type of stuff. But now your monsters are at home. You're trying to defend your castle against this uh, unending assault of, of villagers. And it's just really neat how all of the different uh, player powers can kind of work together. Uh, you can set traps that the villagers will run into. You have your own special attacks that you can run in, uh, that you can utilize as well. Um, and the miniature quality, the component quality is top notch. Uh, so I, I really enjoyed uh, so much. Usually I don't like being the bad guys, um, but this is kind of a tongue in cheek 
mashup of uh, you know, role reversal almost, and I really enjoy it. So that's my number two, Village Attacks. My number two is by far the newest pick on the list. This is Claustrophobia 1643. Can't get newer Ooh. than a game that came in a couple weeks ago. Correct. Yeah, really. Um, <laughs> Unless it uh, showed up, it's in a box, and here it is. <laughs> that would that would be slightly newer by about two weeks. Uh, Claustrophobia 1643 is of course a reprint of the original claustrophobia and they packed in there some expansion content as well that came along you know um, a few years after the original uh, the the care that went into sort of reworking everything some of the rules got changed but the look of everything the detail you know the attention to those details is superb they have one of the coolest things i've seen in a game in a while which I know people are going to, other games are going to use, and that's the idea of having a frame made out of cardboard in which you slide a player sheet and then you close that up, giving you the holes to hold dice or tokens or whatever, right? People love those plastic overlays. Well, this one comes with them in there. They're just not plastic. I wish more companies did that. I know it's really expensive. I just really like it. They are great. They really work well. They hold everything in place. Uh, the whole thing is just captivating. And I like it a lot because it's a short, punchy game. It's a, it's a one versus one game in which every mission is going to be about 45 minutes, about an hour tops. And they give you 20 in the reprint. That's, wow. you know, that's basically greatest hits compilation of the ones from the original set, expansion missions, new missions. Cool. It is just a, you know, again, it's like one of those albums from a great band, and you get all the greatest hits, great components, fantastic miniatures. It's a great, great game. Um, so I was happy to see this back in print and available, you know, to, to serve a new audience again. Uh, an underappreciated game, I thought, originally. Hopefully now it'll get more attention. So Claustrophobia 1643 is my number two pick. All right, my number two pick is... A story-driven game that I really, really like, and I'm, the expansion should be coming out soon, I think, and that's Seventh Continent. Mm -hmm. Really like this game. Looking forward to, you know, seeing more story in it. I haven't seen all the story that's in it so far. I like these kind of games a lot. I like how Seventh Continent, I guess in Seventh Continent, I just don't care if I ever win. Or, I mean, I want to win. I want to get to the end of the story. But I'm just having a good time seeing what happens next. Uh, the, the system of using cards as objects and or uh, to see if you succeed on a mission is a really well done one. Deciding which object to keep when you do a test, how many cards to draw, there's a little bit of push your luck aspect to it. I really like this game a lot. I have so much fun every time I play it and it scales well for me too. I'll play it by myself, play it with other people. Seventh Continent, my number two. And now for the least surprising number ones of all time. And finally, number one. All right, well, my number one, if you haven't guessed it already, it's another <laughs> one from CMON. It's not a guess. <laughs> and it is Blood Rage. Um, it's my favorite game of all time. Uh, I've been very clear on that. Uh, I have played it uh, probably close to 20 times in the last three months, easily. Uh, so I didn't get close to that with like a card game. Yeah, well, it happens. I don't think I've played Rock, Paper, Scissors that many times. Yeah, well, I mean, 20 is probably a, a high estimate. It's probably closer to I, around. No, here's 50, the deal. I'm not even arguing with you. I believe you. 12 to 15. I think you're underselling like it. That, probably. I think it was like 50. <laughs> no, it's not that many. Uh, but I really enjoyed it. It's, it's great. The card drafting, the miniatures, uh, the very simple uh, battle system that's there. Uh, just I like all, all of it. And uh, the different combinations that you can have, the fact that your, your clan is, is so much different than your, everybody else's by the end of the game. I just really enjoy every aspect of this game, and I think it flows really well. It's a great game. Love it a lot. My number one, Blood Rage. That's the scariest monster I will ever see for the rest of this number one list. What's your number one? Maybe so. You know what it is? I think I do. Is it awesome from Seaman? Yes. <laughs> Are there scary monsters in it? Yeah, well, hopefully. I don't do minis unless they're scary monsters. 
All right, my number one is The Others. What? Uh, from the same designer as Blood Rage. I guess uh, Eric M. Wang and Kickstarter just go hand in hand yeah. like uh, sins and beasties. Peas and carrots. Uh, the Others is an all versus one game in which uh, you are going to have a force of goodies playing against some sin or its, its representation, its avatar on Earth. This version of Earth. The thing about it is I still, I, I love the mechanisms. I like that the game finds a way to streamline a lot of concepts that other games have tackled and then get lost in bloat. I never find this game bloated. Mm. But I also think it's just my favorite, I mean, I know it is, it's my favorite all versus one game. There is just nothing else that can touch this for me. I find the arc in the game is engaging. The idea of having the good guys dropping left and right. You've got a pool of seven, you know, and, and so somebody goes down, you, you bring a new one into play. You feel like you're starting again. Of course, you're now down one hero. The... You know, the, the Sins player is going to build up more and more strength throughout the campaign. It, it, it just comes to a head. It's that kind of game that the longer the game goes on, the, ten, the more tense it gets, the more engaging it gets. It's, it's just every flavor here really works for me. So, The Others is my number one pick from uh, Kickstarter. And my number one pick, surprisingly, is the Mega Large. Uh, to this point, heaviest game, but we got a heavier one in the other day. Uh, Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven, just a fantastic game. In fact, on Tuesday, some people had some rules questions for Gloomhaven, so I went over to help, you know, mm -hmm. and I was like, man, I'm going to play this right now. I just, I mean, and I, that's, that, to me, that's a good thing, right? There's a lot of times, so for an example, T Twilight Imperium, when I see people playing it, I'm like, yeah, I had fun playing that game, but I don't feel this desire to sit down and play it. Mm -hmm. With Gloomhaven, I did. And that's, I think that's a sign of a, of a really good game. Lots and lots of fun. My number one, Gloomhaven. And now it's your chance to ask us why we didn't put certain games on the list. Real quick thing here. Um, a lot of people have been mentioning Zaya. I like Zaya. It's in my top 20. Also, Viticulture was mentioned, and that should have been in my top 10, too. So that's what? That's five? You know, I, I know what happened with Viticulture inside. Because Jamie Stegmeier no longer uses... Kickstarter, oh, yeah, I when it. I looked at his games, I just assumed not Kickstarters mm -hmm. because he doesn't do Kickstarter anymore, even though he does do our Kickstarter segment on our show, and you think I would know this sort of thing. Uh, so, yeah. And it seems like if we went through these, I don't know, it looks like Simon's still winning, although that could change um, as time goes by. Uh, no Conan? Oh, no. Rule book, rule book is what really kind of kept it up. I love the system. But the rule book and the scenario book that came along with it was just, it looked like it was written by an uh, eighth grader, maybe. And that might be even generous. It was a translation. <laughs> yeah. Botched yeah. job. Yeah. Someone asked about the Reckoners. I like the Reckoners. It just didn't make my top 10 of all time. That's all. Probably, it might be in the top 20. Cthulhu Wars. It's good, but it's not great. Never played it. Nor the Reckoners. Uh, Nemesis is too recent. These two have not played Nemesis. Nope. Um, I don't. It wouldn't have made my top ten. I've heard a lot of good things about that. I, I should try that one. Is Anachrony a Kickstarter too? Yeah, I guess it is. Anachrony wouldn't have made my top ten, but I like it. Heroes of Land, Air and Sea. Great that game. Made Roy's top ten. Yeah. What about Western Legends? Really enjoyed that. It was on my short list. Hate Z hasn't got yet. No. Uh some people saying Kingdom Death Monster, uh, we, neither, none of us have played it. Oh. And real quick, reasons why, because we had to put together six million miniatures. I don't want to put together six million miniatures. If someone had a miniature put together, I might play it. The theme has turned me off. The, the fact that your hero like, can die by a card flip, that also turns me off. But I would give it a whirl. It just has never happened. No one in our play group has ever brought it right. to the table that I can think of. <laughs> Shadows of Brimstone, same thing about putting the miniatures together. I'm out right there. Millennium Blades. Tainted Grail is not out yet. Right. Uh, role player, was that Kickstarter? I think uh, it was. I think so. Downforce. I like Downforce. It just. That's a good one. Did make Again, my top I mean, all 10. All my picks were games that I thought benefited from being on Kickstarter. I don't think Downforce necessarily benefited from being on Kickstarter. Well, it got made. 
Tiny Epic. It wouldn't have been any different if they just printed it. Uh, is it, guess what I'm getting at? Yeah. Uh -huh. What about Tiny Epic Games? They're still tiny, so no. <laughs> if you, you know, it should be Tiny Epic Game when it, if you publish it straight up, and it should be a a massive production that doesn't fit on this table if you Kickstarter. Otherwise, get out of my face. <laughs> Alien Frontiers, great game. Again, I, I could do a top 100 Kickstarters. I could do a top 200 Kickstarters. I, I know but I like, could. without forgetting any, you mean? Well, or? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you already kind of did a top 18, so. <laughs> yeah, okay, so my my list would have been still we go. Gloomhaven at the top. We're in edits Seventh Continent. We're rewrites. Seventh Continent would have been the second, then third would have been would have been Viticulture. Then fourth would have been Scythe. Then fifth would have been Rising Sun. Sixth, Vindication. Seven, Arcadia Quest. Eight would have been Chronicles of Crime. What was the other one I missed? I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I don't think any of mine were. I said Chronicles of Crime and Scythe already. Those are the ones you missed. Uh, from so here. then probably nine, Arcadia Quest, and ten, Blood Rage. Near and Far, Root, Thunderstone, and King's Guild would have missed the list. Wow. So I only made four mistakes out of ten. That's passing in... What's the percentage of public that? Public schools. Sixty percent. There you percent. go. It's easier when it's not divided <laughs> by threes. Uh, all right. Well, there you go. There's lots of other great games. Exodus, Dice Throne, The Edge. Joan of Arc would have been on my list had it been released. I don't think it's been, it's been, has that, it been fulfilled yet. I think so. we would have seen like people trumpeting on the internet had that been showing yeah, up at people's doors. Right. So, all right. Well, if you're watching this not live, tell us what your favorite Kickstarters are in the comments. We'll see you next week for a top 10 that I'm more on the ball for. <laughs> I hope. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks. Take care. Thank you.